What's up, everybody? Welcome to Mastering Diabetes in Amla Green Live. We are here with Robbie and Cyrus, and there's Indy, who is the star of the show. Hi, Indy. How's it going? Little baby Indy, you want to say hi? Hi, Uncle Corey. Hi, Indy. <laughs> She's so happy. Look yeah. at her. Look at her. What She's going to be with us the entire time, so she might be making a little bit of noise in the background, but that's okay. Well, well, I just saw her drool, Cyrus, and I think she's drooling over this berry mango salad that uh, Robbie's going to be making today. She's so excited. Guys, right. it's going to be a legendary salad, Corey. This is going to be real good. I can't wait. And, you know, this is a special day, folks, because you might have heard about our mocktail guide that we gave you. You might have heard about our smoothie guide that we've given you. But have you heard about our summertime soups and salad guide? Probably not. Hang with us. We're going to show you how to make an amazing berry mango salad. It is whole food, plant-based, and we are excited to do it. Kimberly's coming in from Arizona. Uh, congratulations. I hear you might be getting Kevin Durant in an NBA trade. Uh, you never know what happens over in Phoenix. But listen, I just want to uh, ask everybody where you're watching from. Feel free to comment. Let us know where you're watching from because I'm pretty sure wherever you are, you'll be able to enjoy this summertime berry mango salad. In fact... Yeah. Mangoes happen to be one of these guys' favorite things. Am I right, guys? Absolutely. Love mangoes. I want to know what flavor of Amla Green everybody's consuming right now. I'm drinking my hibiscus. Ooh, hibiscus. I had mine this morning. So, uh, you know, it's it's been a while. It's been a while. Corey, do you want me to get started with the salad? I, I would love it. I mean, let's talk about the ingredients here. And then halfway through the salad, I'd love to tell everybody where they can go to get their free guide. So we're going to get started, guys. And this is totally free. No trick, no nothing. We got it all for you right here. So, Robbie, what's the first thing? It looks like we got what? What are our ingredients? You know, it says blackberries first, but I, I prefer to put the, uh, the greens on my plate first, all right? Okay. So I'm just going to do like one. It says one cup arugula all right okay i love arugula like i think i'm gonna go a little more than that corey but i also just want people to know that i'm using a food scale here and i i if you are living with type 1 diabetes or any form of insulin dependent diabetes i suggest using a food scale if okay. you're living with any uh other form of diabetes uh i suggest using a food scale in the beginning to learn Okay. And then over time, your goal is to never need a food scale, just eat the foods you love. All right. But in the beginning, there's a lot of lessons. Okay. A lot okay. of lessons. So let me get a knife real quick, Corey. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Cyrus, why, why greens? Why are we using arugula? And what, what, are you, what are you thinking about this green? Okay. So there's a couple of reasons why we like to use greens in general. Then there's a couple of reasons why arugula. Okay. Greens in general are a really good way to add some material to the to a, a carbohydrate rich meal that slows the absorption rate of the carbohydrate that's a good thing so the more non-starchy vegetables and or greens that you have in a meal the slower the glucose gets into your blood number two arugula is a nitrate rich vegetable and we love nitrate rich vegetables along with beets along with spinach and along with uh, swiss chard because nitrates serve as the building block for nitric oxide which then serves as the building block for vasodilation, which lowers your blood pressure and allows more oxygen to be delivered to tissues. So in short, we love arugula. Put it in your food whenever you can. Perfect. Perfect. I, uh, I had Robbie come in and out for a second there, but he's coming back. There's the shot. And I know Bess, I'm live. I'm the big one right now. Bess, our producer. So she switched it and made her the big yeah. one. Well, well I'm just, I, if you, I mean, I don't know if, Corey, if you saw it, but I switched over to show people how I log, I'm logging the food. So. Oh, wow. Okay. That's what I'm doing here. I'm just showing uh, that I added, I added 30 grams of arugula and now I believe I teared it. So I have 92 grams of lettuce. So let's add food, type in lettuce and I'm going to add in 92 grams and I'm going to click add to diary. Okay. What so what uh, what app are you using, Robbie? Are we allowed to say that? Because I know people absolutely. Are. We recommend this app at Amla Green and Master Diabetes. It's called Chronometer. Great. All right. So Perfect. I've added the arugula. I've added the lettuce, and now I believe I'm going to start adding these other beautiful ingredients. So I think blackberries was number one. So it says a cup of blackberries. It's going to take this. I got a measuring cup here, and so I want people to know that when we publish recipes at Master Diabetes and Amla Green. We're providing objective quantities so you guys, anybody using insulin can be confident 
in how many grams of carbohydrate you're consuming at each meal. So with that said, I still use a food scale as like a, a double insurance of understanding what I'm eating. And that's just because I'm going for some precision. And you can do that too if you want. Or you could just follow the recipe. And then the total grams of carbohydrate at the bottom will be accurate because that's the information we're committed to providing you guys. All right. Excellent. Okay. And Robert, can you pull can you pull the salad a little bit more into the frame so we could see it? I can see the cutting board perfectly, but yeah, for sure. Let's 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 do that. It's really important that you can see the salad, Corey. <laughs> right. And the omelet green, I can see that too. And for anybody that doesn't know what I'm talking about when I'm saying omelet green, listen, omelet green is the name of a powder, a superfood antioxidant powder that Robbie and Cyrus discovered, and they have made into a tea just for you, for the Mastering Diabetes audience and the Omelet Green audience. It is uh, beneficial towards lowering your A1C. It is beneficial towards helping you get to a healthier blood pressure. But the truth is, I'm not the one with the doctorate degree in nutrition, in biochemistry. That's Cyrus. So I'll let you tell us a little bit about Omelet Green, that, that red tinted water that we saw there. What is that flavor? I know Robbie said it was hibiscus, but tell me a little bit more about that before we keep on going with the salad. Okay. Andy, you want to, you want to tell everybody why Amala Green is so good? Okay. So let's, let's back up here because Amala is the name that's used in India to describe the Indian gooseberry. The Indian gooseberry is this ancient superfood that has literally been around since the beginning of time. And the Ayurvedic philosophy uses amla berries for a whole bunch of, uh, uh, for, for many health reasons. They use it to uh, lower cholesterol, to improve the health of your liver, to improve your digestive state, to lower your uh, blood pressure. Oh, that, I got all monkey. Um, and they also use it as just a general health food that you can um, add to uh, any meal that will give you a very large dose of antioxidants. So we all know that antioxidants are important and they're, they're helpful to have in a diet, regardless of whether you're eating a plant-based diet or not. Um, Amla berries are the single most powerful antioxidant-rich food ever discovered by human beings. So you can literally think about, every time you think of amla berries, I want you to think of them as literally an antioxidant bomb. That's what it is. You put it into your mouth and it gives all tissues, your liver, your brain, your health, your, your, your kidneys, your muscle tissue, uh, your thyroid gland and beyond this massive <laughs> antioxidant <Aww>. bomb. <laughs> I'll be back. Keep going. No worries. We got you. It is a massive antioxidant powerhouse and we have got you. Robbie, speaking of antioxidants, I know that we love to chew our food and I got a lot of stuff that I'm seeing that's really great for chewing. Corey, I got to tell you something. This salad is extraordinary. I, I'm having like great memories making this salad because uh, it was originally made like, you know, a long time ago. Uh, this picture, I remember posting on Instagram many years ago, and I'm just getting excited about it. So uh, you may not like rock carrots. That's okay. You don't, you could, you could steam them. So there's a lot of, you could do a lot of variations here, but what we're doing right now is we're cutting up two, it says, uh, it says one cup of carrots. All right. That's what I'm cutting up right now. And these carrots are going to be delicious. Look at the vibrancy. Cyrus, why should we eat carrots? You shouldn't. Carrots are bad for you. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, uh -oh. Why should you eat carrots? Because carrots, um, it's funny because a lot of people say like, hey, why should I, should I eat carrots or should I eat potatoes or should I eat berries? You know, and the answer is all plant rich material is very, very beneficial. Carrots are extremely high in fiber content. And that's part of the reason why they got such a really strong like thick consistency and uh, fiber is amazing for uh, it's a, it's a prebiotic food that actually feeds the microbiome inside of your large intestine. So get it for uh, because of its fiber content, get it because it is high in many vitamins and minerals. I'm going to have to read a book about why carrots in particular. Um, but the answer is they're tasty. They're very easy to find. They're cheap. And uh, they're extremely nutrient dense. And they help you see better and all the normal stuff that you're used to hearing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Hopefully that's true. Yeah. No, they're, they're, a, they're a whole food, <laughs> plant-based food, guys. They're, they're amazing for you. Robbie, what else you got? 
So I'm going to add oh, my... Oh, wait. You know what? Julie has interrupted us, and it's a good thing she did. She wants to know where we can get this new recipe guide, the summertime soups and salads. Julie, guess what? If you look at the bottom of your screen right now, you're going to see the URL. The URL is a little long, so I'm going to read it to you. You're going to go to amlagreen.com slash pages slash summertime. All right? Now, when you get there, I can promise you, once you opt in, meaning you just give it your first name so we can address you by your first name and your email so we can send it to you because it is a file that we need to send to you that we made. It's like a mini book. Um, once you give us that, we will send it your way. And I'll tell you what, you will also find a very, very special offer to purchase Omla Green. If you want to add Omla Green to your salad dressing, as I'm sure you're going to see in Robbie's demonstration, then you totally can. If you want to sip it like a tea, then you totally can. But I can guarantee one thing. You folks that opt into the summertime soups and salads recipe guide, you are, today's a great day, okay? Because there is an amazing offer on the back end of that. So uh, it'll send you to this page. You just put your email in below and you'll be good to go. So let's head on back to our salad. Thanks for uh, that, uh, that uh, question, Julie. What you okay, got, Robbie? Corey, this, this mango variety is called an Angie, okay? It's, it's absolutely exceptional. Wow. Um, it, I honestly don't know how to describe it other than just say it's absolutely incredible. I, I, wow. So there's over 500 different varieties of mangoes that exist on the planet. Okay. This particular farm where I bought this Angie from, there are over 250 mangoes growing on that one farm down here in Homestead, Florida. Wow. And I just say this to give people the idea, just remember like, there's a lot of variety out there and look for different variety, even in your area, no matter where you live, you can get at least five different varieties of mangoes and it's mango season. So now's the time. So look for Hayden mangoes right now. Look for a tall full of mangoes right now, also known as champagne, also known as honey. Okay. Look for Kent, if I didn't say Kent, Keith, Tommy Atkins, like you can get these varieties in Walmart in Nebraska. Okay. Wow. So go for the variety. Have fun with it. Amazing. Okay. Holy cow. This salad is like a rainbow. This is amazing. It's bursting with greatness, Corey. I, I wish we could all get <laughs> together. And it's just the, this like, Corey, how many times have people come across our pages and saying, this is too much sugar, too much sugar in those mangoes. <laughs> no, it's a completely different thing than processed sugar. Right, Cyrus? Yeah, so one of the things I was gonna say here is that we, at Mashing Diabetes, we love putting fruits in inside of a salad that normally would just have a bunch of vegetables. So you go to a restaurant and they give you a salad. Normally the salad has lettuce, tomatoes, carrots, and mushrooms, okay? They usually don't get too much more diverse than that, but there's no reason why a salad can't also have oranges in it or papaya in it or mangoes in it or peaches or nectarines or name any fruit. So when we make salads, we make them exciting by adding fruits into the salad, which gives it a good flavor. It increases the antioxidant value. It increases the carbohydrate value, which means it's going to keep you fuller for a longer period of time. And in this particular example, this salad is so tasty because the combination of the strawberries plus the mango give it this really sweet, very tasty flavor. So whenever you're in doubt, add some fruits to your salad and it'll really take it up a notch and give it a different personality altogether. Hey, I have a couple of things that I have to address here. Jamie Lynn, she said, Hey Robbie, I thought we were going to talk about roll dotes versus steel dotes today. I'll tell you what, uh, you're right, Jamie Lynn. I, it's my fault. I got excited to release the summertime soup and salad guide, but guess what? Dr. Kambada is here and he will address that question a little bit later in the show after we get through the salad. Okay. And also, I had someone ask a question about their 80-year-old father who is struggling with type 2. If Is it too late for him? And I have an answer for that as well. So thank you, Jillian. Jillian. Um, we are going to address both of these questions. Our producer, Bess, will flag them and star them. I see that she has starred them. We will come back to them, but I want to keep going. We are streaming live across our YouTube channel, across our Facebook pages, 
and we are streaming across multiple places. So we're so excited to simulcast this for you. And I, I see 152 people on just live right now. And we can't thank you enough. All of us. Thank you so much. Um, Robbie, back to you. It looks like you've just destroyed that mango, gotten every available piece of juicy mango. Corey, and, uh, I, can't, I cannot put into words how great the Angie variety of mango is. <laughs> it's got like a little coconut flavor. I mean, it is outrageous, man. I just, I'm going to be honest. I got to tell you guys the truth. I scraped all that stuff and I just ate it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was munching on the, on the seed. I love to just take that seed and just get all the greatness off of it. And uh, I, uh, I feel really excited. I have, now, I have a quick, 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 quick question from In Love With Health. How do we get the salad guide? You're going to look at the bottom of the screen, onlagreen.com slash pages slash summertime it's a longer url and uh we're gonna get better at that making them nice and short but that's how we're gonna get it you're very welcome you're very welcome you can also go to amlagreen.com slash summertime just keep it real simple and it'll redirect to that page so don't even worry about that so oh, amlagreen.com slash summertime and everything's good amazing okay uh robbie back to you my friend yeah back to me so basically what i'm doing is i'm, I'm going to finish adding the ingredients to um, my chronometer here. So basically I added everything. And again, the numbers I came up with are probably different than what you'll see on the guide because I decided to measure, all right? I measure on the food scale. And uh, this is a very simple salad, guys. Very simple. And uh, we're coming out to like 82 grams of carbohydrates. This is very reasonable. I think most people will absolutely enjoy this as is. And I just want to show you guys, like here it is. This is the salad, okay? Unbelievable. Like, it's ready to go. So. Now, people might be thinking, oh, we need a dressing of some sort. The answer is no. We don't need a dressing. You could if you wanted to, but if you mix this up in a bowl, the mangoes are so ripe. The tomato We put two cups of tomatoes. So we did a large volume of tomatoes, and that's going to be very juicy. And when you mix it all up, you're going to have a salad dressing in and of itself right there. So uh, I know we gave dressings in the guide, but for me, I'm just basically drinking my omelet green. And I'm eating my salad. And this is a lunch I'm very excited about, Corey. I love it. Well, listen, I'm going to talk a little bit about Amla Green because a lot of people have some questions, okay? I'm going to show you what we're talking about. This is the product right here. And Bess, if we can make me big screen just for a quick second. This is the product, folks. A-M-L-A -A Green. Those are Indian gooseberries. And we're going to talk about those in just a second, a little bit more. But this is just a tea powder. Now, this is the 90 serving variety okay and when you come in here and you scoop it up you can see it is a really fine powder it is absolutely awesome um it's kind of the the original flavor is going to taste uh very similar to a green tea because it has oolong dark green tea to help combat that bitter omla green flavor you can't just eat uh, i'm sorry the bitter omla berry flavor i'll let cyrus explain this more you can't just straight up eat an omelet berry. It's Ooh. not palatable. Am Ooh. I right, Cyrus? I mean, it would just- Brutal. Okay. So I told you earlier that omelet berries are the single most powerful antioxidant rich food ever discovered by human beings. It is a true statement. Their antioxidant value is not just a little bit more than goji berries or a little bit more than turmeric or a little bit more than dark chocolate or cranberries. It is literally anywhere from twofold in the case of turmeric to tenfold in the case of acai more powerful in terms of antioxidant value. Now, what happens to foods when their antioxidant content goes way up is they become very sour and very hard to eat. Amla berries are a perfect example of that. You take one amla berry, which is the size of a grape, and you stick it in your mouth. Uh, and if you can eat the amla berry without making a ridiculously strange face and uh, actually keep it down, I, I will pay you $5. I really, I honestly will. Okay. It's that whole hard. Five bucks? Wow. <laughs> I know people are like, Ooh, I can do that. <laughs> um, it is definitely a acquired taste. If you, if you come from India and you've been eating it your whole life, then you likely will be able to do it. But um, for your average individual, you put even a small amount of that into wow. your mouth and it doesn't, it tastes terrible. There's also a whole <laughs> collection of products on the market that are just pure ground amla powder. And then you can add that to smoothies or other foods. But even then, the powder itself is still has a really slight sour flavor. And it's just challenging to eat. So when we created on the green, one of the primary objectives was for us to create a tea that actually tasted good. 
So we had to spend a lot of time mixing the umla berries with other ingredients without adding any sweeteners or filler <laughs> or uh, natural, you know, quote unquote natural flavors. And we ended up coming up with multiple different flavors. And the Ulan dark green tea is one of the ingredients that helps neutralize the flavor and actually make it a pretty pleasurable experience. Beautiful. Um, high carb Beth is saying that's too much food in one sitting, Robbie. And I saw someone else say there is no way, even as someone who's managing type two diabetes right now, that I would be able to eat that much fruit. I cannot wait to dive in to those comments. And uh, I, quite honestly, Robbie, unless you have anything else, I would love, there are some amazing questions coming in. I would love to nail these questions down. Please, let's, let's nail them. Let's go. Okay. Before Real we, quick. Yes. Can I ask you a quick question? Yes. Have, have you ever seen anybody chop a salad like that? Robbie does that every single time he eats a salad, and I'm literally like, I've never seen that before. It's, it's, I, I actually have done it before. I have done have it you? before. Okay. Is that um, a thing? I, I don't know. I, maybe he's got a tinier mouth and he just needs to fit in a smaller amount of, you know. No, what I'm doing, this is this is a trademark, Cyrus, of mine, which, uh -oh. uh, so Corey, I'm glad you're copying my uh, salad cutting style. I am. I, I'm but sorry. Yes. What I'm, what I'm here, what I'm doing right now is, again, something I love to do pretty much every salad I eat. But I want to show people how they are going to, like, basically when the final product is going to put, I'm going to put it back on this plate. And people are going to look at it and be like, wow, like it looks really moist. Like, do you have a dressing on there? And I'm showing you with, you know, in front of your eyes that there is no dressing being added to this. Like this is what happens when you make very water rich salads. So Cyrus just explained how, yeah, master diabetes, we put a lot of fruits on our salad. Technically tomato is a fruit, but it's a culinary vegetable. And when you put juicy culinary vegetables plus juicy ripe fruits, on top of your greens, you are, you'll be shocked at how moist this meal is, okay? Okay, so I, I have a, a follow-up question here, and I, I know we want to get to these other questions here, but there's a bunch of people in the comments who are saying like, yeah, I chop my salads too, I chop my salads. They, there's even, apparently they make salad scissors according to In Love With Health, which is awesome. I didn't I'll know show that. you them. Oh, okay. I think Robbie needs a pair of salad scissors. But, <laughs> Robbie, correct me if I'm wrong, couldn't you just chop the ingredients that go into the salad into smaller pieces before you put them into the salad and then just toss at the end so you wouldn't have to cut? You know, that's an option, but I don't think it would create the effect that I'm about to create in front of everybody's eyes in the same way that I'm doing right now. Okay, so show us the final product then. Okay, I will show you guys the final product. Once I've done enough of my hacking. This Robbie, can you see the screen? Can you see these salad scissors? Look. No, let's make you big, Bess. Let's look at those salad scissors. There we go. See? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. It's okay. two blades, and you just cut the salad like so. Never. Right. Now, never here we go. It. Now I'm going to deliver the final product so everybody can see. Final everybody product. Can see that there was no dressing added, okay? This is just, this is just from fruits. Fruits being mixed so so strawberries very high water content very moist blueberries same thing very moist all right all i did was i just sort of cut up i cut it up and i you know exposed the juice exposed the water content and then i covered the greens in it so now if you if you kind of let this sit the greens become like a little like moist to a certain extent and it's very nice. Like this is going to be an exceptional, exceptional salad. Like I don't know what else to tell you guys. That is just bonkers greatness. Okay, I got a follow-up question here. Um, <laughs> what uh, what dressing did you put on that salad? It looks really moist. See, that's a great question, Cyrus. You're yeah. so funny. I know. The the, the no, word I think yeah I think the word moist has been used a uh, hundred times during this show. <laughs> Uh, and that's okay. <laughs> hey, listen, people, I want to review the ingredients with you, okay? We got blackberries, mangoes, tomatoes, carrots, strawberries, arugula, and romaine lettuce, okay? Now, we're going to get into these questions because, holy cow, we're simulcasting across four or five different channels. We got a lot, we got a lot of questions here. First, okay. you need to know, once and for all, how to get this guide, how to get a great deal on Omla Green. Go to omlagreen.com slash summertime. Right there. That's how you get the guide. We're going to send it right to you. No questions asked. And just if it's okay with you, we're going to ask you if you would like 
to save on a great deal for Amla Green. We're going to give you these two, all right? You, you have to see about it. You have to learn about it. Go go, go get the summertime guide. All right. Um, Bess, let's put some questions up here and let's spend the next 10 minutes going through some of these some of these uh, questions. Cyrus, you lead the you lead the uh, you know facilitation of these questions. You take one okay. and throw one to Robbie, however you want. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so let's flash one on the screen and then we can go to it. Or should I go to the yep. start comment? Well, you got Lori's on the screen right now. You see Lori's oh, question? Oh, cool, cool. Okay. Can you please tell us the name of the food tracker again? Okay, uh, Lori, it's called Chronometer. C R O N O M E T E R. Go to the App Store, download that. It's one of our favorites. It's all it's all good. Okay. Uh, Eileen says, I have trouble with the taste of amla. I bought several different flavors and wonder if my taste buds are sensitive to it. Can't I just eat cilantro? Okay. Um, just as I can't eat cilantro. Okay. So Eileen, um, I don't know if you've tried amla green before. It sounds to me like perhaps you have not tried amla green before. Um, if that's the case and you don't love the taste of amla, then join the club. I'm in the same boat as you. That's literally why we made this stuff. Okay. Go to amlagreen.com search for, you know, pick up any flavor that you want, whether it's the hibiscus flavor, the elderberry flavor, or the regular flavor, and it's going to have a completely different experience. And I think you're going to like a lot more. Okay. Next question. Uh, Jillian says, my father is 80 year old type two diabetic. It's too late for him. Okay. What's the oldest person you've helped? Uh, Jillian, the answer is the oldest person we have helped was 87 years old. Okay. And it's never too late. You could literally be 140 years old and be like, Hey guys, my time's over. I can't do anything. Just like Corey's saying, it's all in your head. There is never a moment in life where it doesn't pay off to become healthier. Period. End of story. You could be the healthiest individual in the world. You could be the oldest. You could be the youngest. I don't care. It's never too late. We have literally taken people in their eighties and helped them transition to a plant-based diet. And as a result of that, they've got more energy. They're more resilient. They have less uh, colds and flus and viruses, less respiratory infections, a uh, larger zest for life, uh, increased quality of life and improved blood glucose, cholesterol and blood pressure. So it's never too late. Beautiful. Christina, do you guys rinse canned olives to reduce the sodium content? That's Christian. Uh, that's Christian. Sorry, Christian, my fault. Um, the answer is, uh, Christian, I'm not a huge fan of uh, canned olives in the first place, but if you were to use canned olives, by all means, go ahead and rinse them. You can reduce the sodium content. It's not, it's, it's, it's a good idea. Let's also pay attention to the high fat content of olives, just FYI. Yeah, yeah. so olives are technically a yellow light food, which means they're plant-based. They have a slightly higher fat content. So if you're going to be using olives, use them in moderation, just a small amount of time, and that'll keep your total fat content low and your insulin sensitivity high. Nicole, Cyrus, uh, Cyrus what do you eat on a daily basis? Um, Nicole, uh, I eat mangoes, dates, bananas, plantains, and chickpeas. I have become a chickpea fanatic over the last like four or five years. And I think we should do a little chickpea garbanzo extravaganza one day. How do you guys feel about that? I, I, I make a, I make a raw cookie dough from chickpeas. I kid you not. Okay. Corey's coming over to my house. He's making a raw cookie dough and we're going to, we're going to have fun with that one. <laughs> hey Robbie, okay. I'm going to be, I forgot to tell you, I'm going to be in South Florida uh, next week. And so, you know, I'm going to come visit you and we're going to make a salad together. Let's make a moist salad, Corey. Oh, no, you did not. <laughs> oh, you did not. All right. Now oh. we're banned. Now we're banned from Facebook. So thanks a lot. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Jamie Lynn says, hey, Robbie, I thought we we're going to talk about rolled oats, oat groats, steel cut oats today. Okay. All oh, right. Okay. What's the, listen, Cyrus, you weren't here. You were traveling last time. She wants to know what the difference is between rolled oats and steel cut oats. Why is steel cut better in the mastering diabetes world? Okay, so I want you to think of oats as being a food that has many different ways that you can serve it and prepare it, okay? Some of the oat varieties are less refined. Some of the oat, um, oat preparations are more refined, okay? So there's this thing called a whole grain hierarchy and this was actually first publicized by a woman named Brenda Davis. She's a registered dietitian. She's brilliant. Okay. As far as oats are concerned, the least processed version of oat that you can get is the oat groat. Okay. Least amount of processing, maximal nutrient density. The next in line is the steel cut oat. It's been processed just a little bit more in the steel cutting process. It has a little bit less fiber content 
and has a little bit less nutrient content, but it's still pretty darn high up on the hierarchy. If you continue going down, you'll eventually get to rolled oats, then you'll get to instant oats, then you'll get to puffed oats, and then you'll get to, I can't remember, ground oats at the very bottom, okay? The further you go down this hierarchy, the more processed the oats become, the, uh, the faster the glucose will get in your blood and the more likely it is to cause a blood glucose irregularity. So if you enjoy eating oats, join the club. Oats are phenomenal. They're very high nutrient density, very solid food to incorporate into your diet. My suggestion, Mastering Diabetes suggestion, Robbie's suggestion, Corey's suggestion is to eat them as high on the hierarchy as possible. So opt for steel cut oats if you can find those. Opt for oat groats if you can find those. And anything underneath the steel cut oats tends to be a little bit problematic and can certainly cause blood glucose problems that you probably don't want to deal with. I'd like to also add one other thing to this oat conversation and blood glucose control. Oats happen to be higher in their ratio of glucose, okay, compared to other basically sugars, okay? So fruit has more fructose. And so sometimes when you're just starting out and you're more insulin resistant, you got to be careful with specific foods, oats being one of them, which is why it's even more important to follow the hierarchy that Cyrus just described. Corey, you're muted. Corey, you're still, we're still not hearing you, but that's okay because you look cool while you're talking. We have yeah. one, I said we have one more time for one more question and it's from uh -huh. Yvonne. Cyrus, I'm going to let you read it okay. and uh, you guys both, let's talk about it and let's take us out. And then uh, guys, listen, I have to tell you before the show is over, every Wednesday at one o'clock PM, Robbie is coming on. He's got a brand new show. It's like, Cooking with Robbie. What is it called, Robbie? It's quick, quick oh, meals. Simple meals. Simple, simple meals. Meal. Okay, simple mm -hmm. meals. So I want you to tune in. Same channel right here. I'm Green Mastering Diabetes. Either one. We're gonna we're gonna stream on YouTube too. Mm -hmm. And come come follow Robbie in the kitchen. He spent a lot of time setting this beautiful setup up for you guys. So I want you to come watch. All right, Cyrus, hit us with Yvonne's question. Okay, Yvonne says I keep hearing that you have to be careful mixing fruits and mixing vegetables. I used to make them for potlucks, but people wouldn't eat fruits with vegetables. Okay, so um, Robbie, you can help chime in on this one as well. So in the world of raw foodism, if you will, if you tend to eat a lot of your foods uh, raw or tend to eat all of your foods raw, there, there's a lot of sort of like rules about what you're allowed to mix with what. Fruits are divided into three categories. You got the acid, the subacid, and the sweet fruit. And you're not supposed to mix uh, any more than one category to the right. When it comes to vegetables, sometimes you're not supposed to add specific fruits with vegetables or add fruits with legumes. And from what I understand, their guidelines and the reason that they are there is because anecdotally, a lot of people have discovered that when they combine fruits with certain types of vegetables or fruits with, with legumes, they end up with digestive problems. They end up with a little bit of a volcano in their stomach and then they might become uncomfortable. They can end up with gas, bloating, constipation, diarrhea, you name it. So, um, my understanding is that it is perfectly acceptable to mix fruits with vegetables. I tend to mix the subacids and the acids with vegetables and exclude the sweets with vegetables. So what that means is basically any dried fruit or bananas or dates or persimmons, I tend to not include those with vegetables, but any other kind of fruit that you can think of berries, star, um, sorry, stone fruit, pears, plums, um, any citrus, pineapple, tomatoes, all of those, by all means, you can mix those with vegetables and they shouldn't cause any digestive problems. Robbie, I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, uh, everything you said, I would agree with 100%. Uh, I'm actually not sure exactly like where this has come from, but I've seen this come up a lot. That people will see pictures of my meals on Instagram that the fact that I ate like mangoes and tomatoes and lettuce, and it's like, don't mix lettuce and mangoes. It's To me, it's a little strange. But um, if you are having digestive challenges, digestive discomfort, there are a, it's a, there's a list of things to go through and there could be some issues with your microbiome and sort of your transition to this program. So there's details and nuances to go through. That's why we have a coaching program. That's why we help you. But in general, when your microbiome is in a good state and you're active, this should not be a problem to have a salad just like this. It personally works very well for me. It's been over 16 years now and uh, I think it can work for you too. Okay. Well, we got it. Listen, everybody, that's the end of our show. We're going to be here. If you have a comment, we do respond to the comments, every comment. So we are here for you and we will respond. 
But all you have to do right now is go right there. Paula, I'm so glad you asked that. Om the Green. You can go to omthegreen.com slash summertime. That's where you can get the guide. That's also where you can unlock an amazing deal on Om the Green. There's only a limited quantity of these. I'm not making that up. So just make sure that if you are thinking about it, if you're on the fence, now's the time. You got to take advantage of this uh, exclusive offer that we have for people that are downloading the Summertime Soup and Salad Recipe Guide. We've got you taken care of. And uh, if you ever, everybody's so nice. Marsha, thank you so much for your comment. Everybody, we, we do this because we love you guys. Like, yes, it's really nice to, you know, like sell omelet green every now and then that was created for you. But the bottom line is, is like these guys exist. Their whole reason to be here is to help you wherever you're at in your journey. And we have a lot of people that might be struggling with diabetes, might be type one, type two, 1 1.5, might be gestational. Um, you never know, right? And we want you to know that there are resources out there for you. Those resources are very simple. And Bess, if we could put it, this up on the screen as well, there's a website that is for mastering diabetes. It's just masteringdiabetes.org, okay? If you go to that site, there's a huge purple button that says, start here or book a discovery call. I want you to book a discovery call. If you're struggling, you have no idea what to do. You have no idea what to eat. You're seeing these guys eat a ton of carbs. You're frustrated because you've heard you're not supposed to eat carbs and then you're not supposed to eat bread. You're not supposed to enjoy your life. All of it is very confusing, but you're one discovery call away, one 15 minute call away from finding out some answers to get you into the mastering diabetes world. All right. Find out more about the coaching program. Find out which one's right for you and, and let's get started. Yeah. So guys, you want to take us out with anything else? Do you want to sing a song? I know you're a good singer, Corey. What would you like to hear? I mean, I don't know. What do you want to uh, hear? Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Oh, no. Give me something no. better. How about, how about uh, uh, anything by Taylor Swift? Not that I like it, but I know they're lucky. No, nah, man. I'm going to give you the real stuff. All right. Let's see. I'm going to do, um, I'm going to try to sing On the Street Where You Lived, On the Street Where You Live from My Fair Lady. You ready? I'll just sing like a quick couple bars. Do ready? it. Do it. I have often walked down your street before, but the pavement always stayed beneath my feet before. All at once am I several stories high, knowing I'm on the street where you live. There we Holy go. Holy uh, How's that? Wow. Like like, comment, subscribe. I want more of that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're a musical family. You know, I have a musical theater degree. I hope I can sing. If I can't, then I'm messed up. Holy All right. Christ. Listen, everyone. We love you. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be here for more singing, more salad making, and boy, will it be moist. We can't wait to have you back, everyone. Have a great day. Peace and love.